All right, what's up, guys? So, um, as you hopefully already saw, got a uh, training update um, and kind of starting off my new split. Um, it's possible that I'll have an update with that um, even within the next, I don't know, maybe two weeks as I kind of tinker with um, the exercises I'm going to use, uh, which is honestly a balance of, <clears throat> you know, what I think is uh, the best, the best fit for me. Um, and then some of it's the facility that I'm training at now, uh, where it's a matter of, of semantics as well, too. Uh, and that's one of the things I hope you guys get, you know, where uh, I get questions often of, you know, which, which workouts should I do and things like that. Uh, you know, and any of them is, is a good one. I mean, so if you look through like, you know, 12 different chest workouts, I could comfortably say, you know, they're all great, great workouts. Um, you know, not being a dick, but they're better than 99% of the workouts that I see people doing out there. Yeah, so the thought process is there, the exercise selection is there. And from there, it's a matter of fine tuning. Um, so don't get too caught up on the details. Uh, meaning like, well, you know, one week we saw you doing, um, you know, reverse band bench. The other day we saw you doing incline. And the other day we saw you doing reverse band on a Smith. And it's like, well, the reality is all of those are great options. I could maybe um, create an interesting argument or discussion to which one. If I could only pick one, I would pick. Uh, but the reality is, um, you find the one that, you know, fits all those. So as far as what makes a great exercise, bracing, profile, um, accuracy, alignment, um, they're all great. Uh, they're all very, very good. Um, so then the other factors are up to you. So uh, literally some of it's convenience. <clears throat> if you get pissed off and, and your facility it takes you 10 minutes to set something up, uh, you know, after you do it, just for the record, if you ever have to set something up the first time, it always takes forever. You know, then write down the numbers and the settings and where you put things or whatever and normally it takes two minutes but if it pisses you off do what's easier or if your facility doesn't have heavy enough dumbbells or it doesn't have the right smith or it doesn't have whatever look through some of the big options as, as far as there's plenty of options there's what's going to be great possible uh, big exercises to stick with for a while and progress um, and then there's obviously small variations of when i've done more or less volume and all that stuff is just fine-tuning over time so uh, as always Hopefully get a takeaway, um, you know, a, we got a good broad spectrum of good exercises to pick just like this workout. Um, and then from there, <clears throat> just kind of fine tune. So get the principles uh, and then work on execution and effort and just kind of try and crank it up from there. Because um, eventually like there's, it's totally worth messing around with and finding which one's your best fit. You know, so some people will say like, well, the key is just to pick the basic exercises and just progress them over time. And the mistake on that is you'll have people that like, they feel like they have to do flat barbell bench press because that's that's a basic that you have to do for chest. And if you don't spend time figuring out what's the best fit where it could be a five degree incline or a 10 degree decline on a uh, barbell bench press, you know, that just makes all the difference in the world. So if you don't spend time finding those things, then you might be stuck with the wrong stuff that doesn't get the right results over time uh, or causes injuries or issues. So it's worth finding the things that are best fit. And then, yes, I totally agree, you know, stick with those. So I, I'm I, even for me, I'm still always fine tuning. But for most body parts, I could say maybe I have two to three uh, go to exercises that I rotate kind of over the course of the year. Um, and some of it's convenience. Now, some of it's because there are no perfect exercises. So even the very good ones, you rotate every once in a while. If, if again, just something for those. Um, I think it could help to a degree in preventing injury. Um, but anyway, so yeah, once you find your great things, then this is my plan now is I'm kind of using the next app on paper what I think I'm going to do. Semantically, I'm kind of figuring out <coughs> if I'm going to change anything over the next week or two. And then I'm just going to stick with these things, um, you know, as much as my schedule allows and just try and make some great progress on them. So as you know, I'm trying to keep my volume extremely low. So it's four exercises total. Um, again, I had two on this day. It's a push day. So I had two for chest, one for delts um, and one for triceps. Um, and you'll be seeing as I go through the split, I've got a lot of pressing in there. So people are like, you know, it's uh, how can I get away with just one um, delt exercise? Uh, you know, I've uh, on various over the course of eight days, I hit my side delts twice. Um, I hit my rear delts, I think once or twice. Um, so it's it's all getting in there and I do a ton of pressing stuff. So there's one straightforward overhead pressing stuff, but then there's some close grip pressing stuff and things in there as well too. So my delts are actually a priority. Um, you know, so it's, uh, it, it's a daunting task of fixing, picking four exercises, uh, and then just sticking with it, but you want a lot of bing bang for your buck exercises. So these are obviously exercises I think are great. The only place you'll see some variation in here is, uh, and I'll write this in the, the workout for the day too, just so you can see is I'm still dealing with my triceps. <clears throat> honestly, I'm feeling great about them because they've, they've been making progress. Honestly, um, half of it's like, 
I don't want anybody to think that it's not that big of a deal, to be honest. It's one of those things where pain, I could easily train through it. Uh, but I'm really trying to be doing the things that nobody does, uh, again, myself included previously, where it's like, you know, you kind of half fix it, half push through it, half fix it, half push through it, never quite all the way do the things you're supposed to be doing. And I really just told myself, I don't, I don't have any rush. You know, it's like, uh, surprisingly, like my triceps are probably down a little bit in size, but not a whole lot, uh, being honest. Um, so it's one of those things where if I can just kind of tread water, I'm the first person to say, unfortunately, there's going to be one body part that doesn't make progress for a little while. Uh, but if I can get my tricep tendons feeling 100%, that's going to be a great thing. So you'll see I have the uh, isometric holds, positional holds at the end, which I'll talk through a little bit again. Um, basically, I'll talk a little bit about right now. It's, um, you know, it's, uh, you always, if you want something to make progress, you, you have to change something. Uh, so one is if you really have bad exercises or bad movements, part of it's getting rid of those. So for me, it's, you know, it's anything with a fixed bar, <coughs> pretty much anything, both hands at the same time. And um, so that's part of it. Then the other part is, you know, you, you have to train the muscle, you have to train the tissue, you have to load the tissue. Things don't recover if you don't load it. So even having very bad tricep tendonitis, I've got to find a way to load it. Um, so I've been doing, um, as you guys see, I've done BFR, um, I've done uh, some eccentrics I can train pretty well, um, some very positional things for concentric. So when standard like extension motions, I can basically load just the very short and ranged. Um, so literally the range where I'm extended and shoulder extended behind me as well too. So basically like cable motions back here. Um, but that's about it. I, I can't do anything mid range. It just, it kills. And I found that I can actually load it with isometrics. Um, and as you'll see, that's again, I posted this on Instagram. It's the most boring video of all time. Um, but I'm pressing 10 out of 10. I slowly ramp up when you're doing positional isometrics, especially on things that you have pain. Uh, so again, to answer the question, I'll probably get is the, basically the only reason I do these right now is if I'm working around pain. Uh, do I think it has enough merit to, might have some merit somewhere, but again, if you can train pain-free, then just do, uh, you know, more traditional, you know, eccentric, eccentric work for the, the vast majority of your time. Uh, but so while this is all that I can train, when I get into that unmoving object, that Smith machine, I'm locking everything down in stone, and I'm slowly ramping up my perceived effort. Uh, so I'm counting like on a, a 10 being as hard as I can push, I'm slowly counting one, two, three. Four, and that's how I'm ramping up. So it probably takes 10 seconds <coughs> for me to ramp up to as hard of a contraction as I can produce. And then I'm holding that for about 10 seconds or so. And so basically, uh, I'm trying to just find ways to load the tissue 100% uh, pain-free. And, and I, I make the argument that as I, I can kind of, so the goal for here would be longer isometrics in that position, um, maybe more sets. Um, and then from there, working in a various position. So if I can do 90 degrees right now, I want to be able to work into doing it here. I want to be able to work into doing it here, you know, slightly extending that range a little bit side to side until once I can do positional isometrics in pretty much every position, I should, in theory, be able to do concentric training again. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, so in place of that one, obviously any tricep exercise I've showed before would be a fine option. Uh, the cable cross, um, the cable uh, kind of behind the head, skull crush, single arm dumbbell tricep extensions, um, anything that's got good alignment bracing. Not, and again, I'm not speaking to everyone. If you fit for skull crushers, great. If you sp uh, fit for two-arm dumbbell skull crushers or tricep extensions, great. Have at it. Um, so that could be another option, um, you know, for that fourth exercise of the day today. But it's uh, two chest exercises. You'll see a recomm accommodating resistance, which I think always has to be in there for me for press movements because the profile is so great. Um, and then the gym I'm at now has a great one of my favorite pressing machines. Um, so I love... Uh, you guys have seen this at every gym I've trained at. I love some sort of converging machine because uh, I think it's a great way to get to a relatively shortened position with the pec and train it without wasting uh, volume. So again, I don't think there's merit of doing an exercise that just loads the shortened position. But if I can get something that's you know appropriately heavily loaded here and loaded as I get to that position, uh, then I think that's good use of volume. Uh, so there's a great, it's a nautilus piece, uh, one of my favorite uh, I think it's a Nautilus Explode line, maybe, but it's a Nautilus flat chest press. Not that hard to find, uh, but it's uh, one of my favorite chest pieces. Um, and then from there, lying cuff lateral raises. Uh, again, I don't think there's a better um, lateral raise variation. And then my tricep exercise. So, um, you know, if you guys see as I go through this rotation, obviously I think these are great exercises. Obviously I think these are big bang for your buck. Um, I, I think that side delt exercise is one of the best exercises you'll get where it's because it's so strict, it's such a good profile. It aligns so well <clears throat> if you get really good at it and then like everything else brutally strong at it you're just gonna have some massively capped delts um, and again between a little bit of rear delt training um, and some pressing 
it should be more than enough volume to have some big delts. So um, same as always, I'll kind of walk through some cueing. You know, for chest stuff, it's keeping that scapula still on these motions, on, on pressing motions. Um, you know, for lateral raises, it's, it's uh, again, the entire body's lock in stone, out more than up. Uh, and again, I'll walk you through those isometrics again as we go through as well, too. So um, very, very good workout. If you guys are kind of coming along and fine-tuning your volume with me as well, too, feel free to do the exact workout. Feel free to adjust, obviously, maybe for the tricep thing at the end. Uh, but I really, really think it's a good split. Um, and I think it's something good that I'll build upon. And, and as I've got written in there, <clears throat> pretty much everything today, yeah, without exception, I think for the delts, I did three sets. So I, I like a little bit more volume with delts. Um, but for all the uh, chest exercises and even for the tricep positional isometrics, I did two working sets. Uh, and so guys, remember when I list working sets, I'll put, uh, I'll put a range on there. So it'll say like this, the, you know, it'll say two working sets, um, you know, six to 10 rep range. Um, so as hopefully if you guys following along, <clears throat> you want to hit your first set is your heaviest set. That'll be the heaviest weight that you hit. Um, and for me, that's when I'm in that lower end of that rep range. So if I put six to 10, I don't want you below six. Um, so I'm shooting for, let's say six reps, whatever the bottom end is, you know, that's the minimum that you're trying to hit. So I might hit a weight that I do for, you know, six to seven reps. And then I'm going to take a full rest, whatever I have listed in there, probably about three minutes rest time for this case. Um, and then I'm going to hit something in that upper rep range of maybe eight to 10. So normally if that's, that's how you kind of determine what is the range. I'm trying to capture that lower end. And I'm trying to capture that higher end. So you just do the weights accordingly. You will absolutely have to drop the weight. Sometimes I'll say drop down set or whatever. Uh, but you'll just have to. If you want all out for that first set, it's obviously impossible to do the same weight or more weight um, for more reps. Um, so just drop down to whatever appropriate. And the same, your, your execution and effort doesn't change. It should be all out effort for these sets. Um, or it's again, if you have a spotter, you know, take them past failure, you know, take them through the sticking points of that profile. Um, or if you're by yourself, try and set the pins of the rack to where you can die on the eccentric, um, or just do your best. Honestly, for all, what I like to do too, when I put in all new movements, I just take them to my, what I can do myself failure. Um, sometimes I don't have a good spotter. Um, and then sometimes that's enough stimulus to start anyway. Uh, so, you know, uh, when I don't have somebody, I'm not going my forced reps or whatever. You just kind of do what you can do. Um, and so that, that's just for any questions about that. That's how you navigate through that. And uh, that's it. Here's the workout. Enjoy. All right. So first exercise, low incline barbell press. Uh, take note of the bands on this one, this guy. So I'll just show you my last two warm-up sets to any of my chest or presser activations. Um, so I want the bands, you know, you got to mess around with where it feels like it's a 10 out of 10 effort the whole time. You know, so I've maybe got the bands going the last... I don't know, maybe fair to say right there, I don't know, five inches or so of the range of motion they're helping. So something that comes on for a relatively short range, relatively fast, and that's just something that takes some time, takes some practice. Um, so find that right spot. Those things I have on there, those red things are called daisy chains. Um, so go pick some up uh, because you can get them on Amazon for 20 bucks. They're tested to like 5,000 pounds or something stupid because they're for rock climbing. Uh, so they're not going to break and they make it so much easier. Obviously, you can see I could put the carabiners on any different height. Uh, and again, I got this idea from Tom Purvis. I'm not smart. He was definitely the guy that got it because it's so simple and so easy uh, for accommodating resistance because you can again set the height where they come on at any point in time. And this is my last warm up. So from a form cueing thing, you know, shoulder blades uh, lock and stone, down and braced. And you'll see my last warm up set here is the same weight as my working set uh, because this whole setup and everything is new for the gym. So again, I did take it to full failure and it was actually I was like okay well that's going to be pretty hard for me to actually get uh, the rep range that I want to get so again for setup I'm driving my feet slightly forward into the ground and this is helping me lock my hips in stone big arch set uh, my whole torso so lower back is braced abs are braced shoulder blades are pinned down and back and they are pressed hard into the bench again best cue I can give is as hard as you contract your chest is how hard you push your shoulder blades back into the bench that's where people shit the bed training chest is as they come to the top when their chest starts to give out instead of trying to work and contract that chest as hard as possible um, they just kind of think up, you know, so if you're thinking about working your chest as hard as possible, drive that arm across, squeeze your pec as hard as you can, um, and at the same time, push your shoulder blades back into the bench. So hopefully, as you can see on that set, um, at no point in time did my shoulder blades pop up or come forward. 
and they just stayed locked back in stone the whole time. So that's once you have that whole setup set, that's the goal. Is none of that moves. Is your feet are locked. I kind of have wiggly feet, so I do the best that I can with that. But feet locked, hips locked, whole torso locked, shoulder blades locked in stone. And it's just that pec uh, uh, pulling your upper arm hard across your body. Uh, and like I said, back to profiles here. Just you got to go by feel. You want the contraction or the effort to, to feel like it's a 10 out of 10 hard the whole time. On your last rep, if it's perfect, you should just be dying and grinding for every little inch. You know, it shouldn't be like the bottom's really hard and then you pop up to the top. Now, that's the normal profile for a lot of people is the bottom's really, really hard and then they can just kind of pop through the top. You want the bands so that you can actually have it slightly lighter at the bottom and obviously whatever heaviest load you can handle at the top. So it just feels 10 out of 10 hard the whole time. And if you haven't done this before, you haven't done accommodating resistance, prepare for the best feel you could possibly have for hypertrophy where it is just so much brutal tension. You, you don't realize until you do it how much you're used to taking a break at the top. And... Um, so obviously skipping that, you're just going to feel like you're working harder the whole time, creating more tension the whole time, more damage the whole time. Um, and you're, from a pump standpoint too, the, the pump is just ridiculous, which is a meat head is uh, anecdotally very important. Um, and this is my big movement, flat chest press machine. Uh, so hammer strength works fine here. I like the profile of this one a little bit better for the Cybex, or excuse me, the Nautilus. Uh, I like the alignment here. Just a great, great machine. All the same stuff. Hips locked in stone, pushing uh, my feet into the bench, upper back locked in the bench. And most of the time, if you have a slight, uh, if you have a flat uh, press like this, you're going to have to turn it into a slight decline. Um, so I have a big arch set. And this is really, really easy to see what you want here from the side. You know, so you look at my shoulder joint, you look at my upper arm, my lower arm path, um, and it all lines up perfectly with the pec fiber. So I just want to kind of show you guys a couple different angles here. I think I just gave you my top two working sets. Um, so what you're looking at from here is shoulder blades pinned down and back, big arch in the back. Um, and again, alignment is everything on this one. So manipulate your spine position, manipulate where you're at. So again, if you look from the side, you can see how the upper arm, the lower arm, all should line up. The pec lines up, the shoulder joint lines up. And this machine lines up pretty damn well for me. The way they have this set up is it's only a slight arc where hammer strength machines can have this big arch that they take it through. So the height that your hand goes through changes a lot through the exercise. Um, so if that's the case, obviously you just have to... Um, uh, you know, make an adjustment and, and find the range that works best for you. Um, so that was my top set, and this is my drop down set. And again, obviously, everything the same, just trying to give you one slightly different angle. Shoulder blades pinned back, not just back. I feel like I'm pulling them down towards my hips, keeping that rib cage up and high the whole time. So, to a certain extent, breathing needs to be relatively shallow. So, you don't want your rib cage moving up and down the whole time. I have a big arch. I feel like I'm taking in a certain amount of air. I'm bracing that in my midsection, I'm bracing that in my ribs. And I'm keeping my ribs still. If your ribs move during a chest press, you're changing the length of your pec as well too. You're possibly changing the advantage they have over your side delts or over your front delts. Um, so you want to keep that rib cage tall the whole time and unmoving. And that'll keep the same length of pec uh, the entire time during the exercise. And as you guys have seen a million times before, my favorite lateral raise exercise. Um, and this is my favorite activation. So you guys have seen this where I'm um, got basically, I'm uh, kind of an internally rotated position, actually. Uh, you basically just want, if you can see the direction that cable's pointing, if you drew a line through your shoulder joint at that exact angle, you want your side delt perfectly aligned with that. So you can kind of see that's why I have my side delt kind of on the top half-ish, you know, kind of somewhere between the back and the top of my shoulder joint. And that's really a fully short uh, delt. Uh, so that's honestly a horrible exercise for growing muscle. Um, you would never actually uh, be able to load it significantly in that position because that delt is pretty much truly short, uh, but it's great for feeling your delts. And then right in from there, um, I really just like to break off chunks of the uh, exercise, so meaning chunks of the range of motion. So getting it really, really uh, just the top half, uh, making sure that I own that, control that, um, over the top, deliberate, slow, controlled, same thing out of the bottom, the, the kind of stupid stuff that you should know, we all should know, but don't do, um, is really make sure I can answer the question, do I feel my delt, um, making sure all this movement is coming from that contracting and not just swinging stuff around. 
and then just toss in a couple last full range of motion reps where it's really the same thing, kind of putting those pieces together. Uh, so I think it's a great, great activation and everything, a uh, great way to feel the delts, um, get aware um, of the entire range of motion, make sure you're using your delts, um, you know, make sure you can feel them in that fully shortened position. And then the added bonus is if you've ever done that, you'll also get a sweet pump too. And again, there's something to be said about that. The pump itself is not important, I don't think, um, as much, especially, uh, <clears throat> you know, for a, a performance standpoint. Um, but it's obviously has something to do with growing muscle, blood flow and things. So it's nice when I can accomplish the important goal of feel and activate my muscle and get a little pump along the way as well too. And here's working set. So best I can trying to keep things locked in stone, always thinking out, not up. And if you have the profile set right on this, this is how the rat last rep should look. So really, really grinding for that last rep. Um, and not really having anything left after that point. So I, I actually like the handles there. You guys have seen me do this on the dual cable. I like it better with the, the excuse me, the dual cable life fitness makes where the cables are like six inches apart. I actually like it better on that machine. I just had most dual cables where maybe the, the handles are whatever that is, three feet or, or so apart. Um, so that that's you can mess around with, especially if you have a free motion or something where you can adjust how far apart they are. That's that width is pretty damn good. So somewhere outside a shoulder width tends to be a freaking great profile. But again, <clears throat> that takes practice. That takes feel of where it just feels the same level of difficulty every inch of the range of motion. Um, and again, this is my only tricep exercise for the day. So I found first and foremost the angle I could produce some tension at uh, without pain. And then I adjusted the height of the Smith machine. Works great. So if you can't see, I'm pushing my hand uh, you know, in the direction of extension, uh, elbow extension, as hard as I can into that Smith. Before I do that, I've got a widest stance. I literally intentionally try and brace my hips, my glutes, my abs. I try and lock that shoulder blade down and back in stone fix that upper arm. So I'm trying to keep my whole body braced and still. And then it's a slow ramp up where I'm literally counting my brain, attempting to one, two, three, four, all the way till I'm at a 10 out of 10 and just trying to hold that contraction as hard as I can. And the key is this is 100% pain free. So it has to be a pain free range. Um, and I just did two sets of this. And I, I honestly wasn't you know, looking at the time now as I'm going through this, maybe 10, 15 seconds of that max contraction. And that's kind of what I was shooting for. So I just really wanted that held and locked down in stone and, and trying to get as much output as I possibly could um, pain-free in that range. And so again, it's, um, you know, if I'm really starting to, when I was doing this, if you really do a 10 out of 10 contraction, you really start to hit full fatigue, close to failure at, you know, I was around that 15 seconds point. Um, so I really, you know, I, I still think uh, just for whatever reason, anecdotally more than anything else, uh, maybe some good sciencey reasons too, that, you know, standard traditional uh, concentric, eccentric style training works the best uh, for growing muscle, but the amount of tension that people get weirded out by the fact that stuff's unmoving, it doesn't matter if it's unmoving or that you're not moving, there's still a real number. If I could put a scale, obviously, on top of that Smith machine and press down into it, I mean, I was producing a lot of force. You know, if I can do dumbbell extensions with 50 pounds or something, I was doing over that amount. I can guarantee it with how much I had to lock and brace my body in place and the fact that it was literally only 10 seconds of just all-out output. So the amount my tricep had to literally yank on that bone uh, to produce that level of extension, it, it was a big number. And so at the end of the day, if that's what we're trying to do, we're trying to make that number, how hard is that tricep pulling on that bone um, as high as possible, then I can't I can't see how that couldn't in theory still help grow some muscle and as a bare minimum I'm definitely producing range and uh, producing tension and and uh, producing uh, load on the tissue in that range and that's really the goal I mean nothing recovers all rehab all therapy in some capacity should involve loading the tissue if you don't load the tissue it will not recover it will not grow um, it'll literally just it'll turn to shit tissue um, you know and then that's that's what happens that's why some people they don't rehab right. They just get something done and they just sit still and they feel bad for themselves for three months and then they're super fucked after that. Uh, so that's the example of like maybe a surgery. But for this as well too, if you don't, people make two mistakes. You know, you don't want to train through, um, you know, pain, tendonitis, things like that. I uh, mean, doing the same things, you know, really having a lot of pain, but that has nothing to do with the fact that you can't load the tissue um, still somehow, some way, because that is, in my opinion, required for the recovery process. Um, so there's the workout, guys. Um, got some more coming this week. Uh, and like I said, it's you know pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, but you know, work on trying to get your execution as high as possible. You know, crank those loads up once you do, 
and uh, and when you, and like again when you find obviously if you're I'm I'm in the process of uh, you know working in some different gyms and stuff. Yeah, but when you, you have the ones that work, you have the ones that fit, you know, you, you think, you, you know the movements that are your best movements. So it's, again, a lot of times, especially for your best body parts, you find the best movements, stick with them. I mean, you might do uh, one movement 80% of the year, just rotating to other, other ones here and there. But that's what you should do. I mean, that's how you know you're going to be making progress. It, within that same movement is the execution getting better, you know, are the loads improving. It's with your worst body parts. This is the catch-22. Is like you, you need to do those same things as well. The ideal goal would be to have your best exercises for your worst body part and just pound them into submission just like the other ones. Uh, but the challenge is, you know, you don't – if it's your worst body parts, you're generally going to have to work more to find those. You know, so you don't want to spend a decade finding those, you know, just always changing stuff, never making any progress. Uh, but you might have to experiment around a little bit more, try some different options, body positions, cues – you know, execution, all sorts of stuff uh, to find it, you know, before you really get the one that you that you like and then that works. And then once you have that, then like I said, absolutely stick with those and, you know, grind those into submission.